So, I am a gamer, and I would like to think I'm a pretty good one. I mean, I've beaten a whole lot of difficult things in the past, and I still absolutely love playing difficult games. I'm pretty well rounded when it comes to them as well, I'd say. I've gotten decent at things like mashing keys, jumping through spikes, doing insane platforming, beating incredibly difficult bosses, and even climbing a mountain with nothing but a hammer. However, there is still one type of quote-unquote hard game that I have not dabbled too much into, Bullet Hells. Now I've played a few in the past and played games where you could consider some parts to be sort of bullet hell-ish, is that even a word? But never have I sat down and played one from the start all the way to the end, so I thought, why not play one of the most popular and well-known bullet hells out there, the Toho series. And oh my god was I not ready for what I was about to face. This will be fun. Now originally, my plan for this video was to start all the way from the very first Toho game. I thought I might as well start from the very beginning if I was going to be playing all the games anyway. But then, that's when I found out that it cannot be run on anything except for a Windows 98. Are you joking right now? So obviously I don't have a Windows 98 and I won't be able to play the first few games. So I just decided to start with the first game that would be relatively easy to access. The sixth game in the series, Embodiment of Scarlet Devil. So in my first swing at the game, I immediately went all like, hey, I ain't no goddamn bitch baby, and picked hard mode, despite reading online that you should start with normal. This obviously did not go well for me, and on top of that, I didn't even know how to focus my character, so what ended up happening was me going Mach 10 through 5 pixel gaps between projectiles. So as expected, I didn't make it very far, and got absolutely dumpstered by Mei Ling in stage 3, forcing me to take off my big boy pants and play in normal mode in shame. My second attempt went a lot better, I would say. First of all, I figured out how to focus my character this time, meaning I wasn't zooming across the screen every time an enemy barfed out projectiles in my general direction. Next, the reduced projectiles in normal mode meant I had a much better time navigating through the absolute insanity this game throws at you. So overall, I had much better chances at survival this time. And I was feeling pretty damn confident. Now this of course until stage 4 happened. I was not ready for the massive spike in difficulty that was heading my way. Just the sheer length of the stage was enough to make me start sweating. But put that on top of the fact that there are probably twice as much junk on the screen now compared to the last 3 levels, and you have a recipe for disaster. I haven't even gotten started on the boss yet, just look at that absolute insanity! My god was Pacholi a massive pain in the ass. The amount of chaos she shoots at you is just nutty and I was struggling so hard to dodge this goddamn laser attack she keeps doing. But despite all that, nothing could have prepared me for Sakuya. I know a lot of people consider Pacholi to be the biggest pain in the nuts, but honestly, no one has given me a harder time in probably all the games I played so far than Sakuya. I just cannot dodge her patterns for crap and I'm guaranteed to lose a good chunk of my HP even to the mid-boss version of her. A lot of her attacks also seem to be heavily RNG based, namely this Zawardo attack she pulls out during her spellcard phases. She ended up putting an early close to my second attempt, but I find myself able to survive her barrages most of the time, of course with a lot of my health now missing. Now, this would be fine if she was the last boss in the game, but sadly I need as much resources I can gather since there is still one more foe awaiting me after her. Now I'll be blunt, Remilia is hard. She's definitely the hardest boss in the game by a long shot. Her attacks are chaotic and unpredictable. Some go slow and some just come flying straight at your forehead. Some attacks are a lot easier to dodge than others, but most of the time your butt cheeks are just gonna be clenched to their limit due to the amount of crap you need to dodge. However, I still do think the biggest annoyance in this game is Sakuya. Just because she whittles down your resources before you even get to the part where you need them the most. Now yes, I am aware of the fact that bombs don't work on Remilia's last spell card. But they can still be used as a repositioning tool if you get back into a corner. So having less bombs and of course HP is a massive hindrance to you and I could have even beaten this game much earlier if I just had one more life to spare. 
God, that hurts. The main strategy I used to conquer this game was just saving as much resources as possible. So that even if Sakuya claims a few lives, I'll still be healthy enough to face Remilia without needing to do a hitless run on her. As much as possible, I tried not to take a hit during the first three stages, and I tried not to use to continue before I beat Pacholi. This, of course, is a lot easier said than done since, as mentioned earlier, Pacholi is no joke. After a few attempts and some luck though, I managed to make it to Remilia with a good amount of HP and I continue up my sleep. Downing her once and for all and beating my very first Toho game. Feels good. Moving on to the next game, Perfect Cherry Blossom. I actually found this entry to be a lot easier than the last one I played. I don't know if it's because beating Remilia up my skill tenfold, or because the game is genuinely much easier than Embodiment of Scarlet Devil. But I had little to no issues beating this game. So in this one, you may notice that I'm also collecting these pink items alongside the usual blue and red ones. That's because they added a new mechanic that made the game a lot more forgiving. Basically, if you collect enough of these pink things, the game gives you a border that lasts a few seconds. If you get hit by an enemy during this time, it detonates, deleting all projectiles on the screen, pretty much acting as a free bomb. If you don't get hit during this time, you get rewarded with a bunch of points. However, this was kinda useless for me since I was just playing to survive, so I pretty much always popped the border on purpose. They also added Sakuya as a playable character, so I immediately picked her, considering she was my absolute bestest friend in the last game. Now I once again don't really have much to say about the first few stages of the game. This game as a whole didn't give me much problems, so I just breezed through stages 1-3 to three without looking back. The game only starts to get real around stage 4 again, and oh my god is the fourth stage of this game girthy. The length of this stage is just absurd, and I'm pretty sure there's even like 3 bosses in it or something. Playing through the stage just feels like an eternity spent in hell. Nothing but pain and suffering. Worst part is, I absolutely suck at the boss at this stage, the Prism River Sisters. I've heard some people call this boss a joke and probably the easiest stage 4 boss in all of Toho. Now my question is how exactly? I don't know if I'm just bad or what, but Pacholi seems like an absolute joke compared to this one. Even with the previously invisible hitbox of your character, I had a much easier time dodging Pacholi's fireball spam than most of this boss's attacks. Like the stage, the attacks seem to go on forever and they're much, much more chaotic and unpredictable. I'm just really awful at dodging the attack patterns they throw at you and I consider myself lucky only needing to face these sisters twice. The next boss however is probably my favorite boss from all the games I've played so far, Yomu. Her attacks are so unique and fun to dodge that it's just an absolute delight to play through. I love bosses with slow and dense shots, so weaving through Yomu's barrage of projectiles is just a blast. Her animations where she cuts through the world are just dope as all hell, and all her spell cards are so wild and nutty, like, come on. You can't tell me that isn't the coolest thing you've seen in a while. Most of her attacks seemed completely fair to dodge, and whenever I get hit, I felt like it was completely my fault for bad positioning or just not paying enough attention to the screen. The time slow felt very natural to dodge through and was a really interesting mechanic to give this boss in my opinion. I just loved every second of this boss and I really do hope I get to fight more bosses like this later down the line. For the last boss, Yuyuko, I honestly don't have a lot to talk about. She didn't give me nearly as much trouble as Remilia did and she only had the few attacks that I felt were downright ridiculous to dodge, namely this one. I don't know how people are supposed to do this without bombs since it is just so hard to escape from this cracking explosion thing while the boss just unloads on you. I will admit though, her final attack? Incredible. Dodging through this barrage of flowers and bullets was incredibly fun to do in my opinion and it really got the blood pumping for this final fight. She also does this thing where after you kill her she revives for a bit and you need to survive for like 60 seconds or something. But I just trivialized this with bombs. At this point, I still had so much resources left over and coupled that with the fact that Sakuya has an extra bomb on her stock meant that I had an entire arsenal to unload on this boss. I know bomb spamming is far from graceful and it's a pretty cheesy strategy to just delete every bullet she throws at you. But as I said, my only goal was to survive and clear these games, so with that, 
I beat my second Toho game in only 2 attempts. So in our next game, Imperishable Night, a lot of new mechanics have been added to spice things up a bit. Firstly, you may notice that I'm collecting these purple star looking things on top of the usual items. These are called Time Orbs. In this 8th entry of the series, we are put under a time limit. The game starts off at 11pm and if the game ever reaches the 5am mark, you lose no matter what. Doesn't matter how much lives you have left or how much continues you have up your sleeve. Once the time limit hits, it's game over. Every stage advances the clock by an hour and every continue advances it by 30 minutes. However, every stage has a time requirement. Collect enough time orbs and instead of an hour passing after a stage, it is reduced to 30 minutes. Increasing the amount of continues you can use before the game hits dawn. There are multiple ways to get these time orbs, by either killing enemies or through your character's side. Another new mechanic they added to this game is a sort of tag team system with their characters. Instead of only picking one cute anime girl, you get to pick a team of two cute anime girls. How lovely! Each character has their own shot type, passive ability, and their own sides. Namely, the human side and the yokai side. The longer you stay in one character, the more you move over to that character's side. Being human allows you to collect time orbs by simply hitting enemies, and being a yokai allows you to collect time orbs by grazing boss attacks. The way you swap between these two is extremely simple. All you need to do is press the focus button. Stay on focus for human and focus for yokai. The system of being human or yokai led to a lot of my frustration with this game if I'm being honest. Since I'm bad, I need to squeeze out as much continuous as I can from these time orbs. Problem is, reaching the requirement is pretty difficult. Whenever you're focused, your time orb gain is severely reduced during non-boss encounters since your yokai orb collection passive isn't up. This means you pretty much have to play most of the game unfocused, which is goddamn frustrating. Now you may think I could just not bother with the extra orbs from a character's passive, but even when I kill as much enemies and stay human for as long as possible, I still barely reach the quota. The most frustrating part about this is that this usually puts you in a higher risk to lose lives, which can possibly render your extra continuous useless. You also lose a lot of time orbs whenever you get hit, even if you use the newly added last spell mechanic which gives you a small window to bomb after you get hit and not lose a life. Overall, I found this time requirement thing to just be pretty damn annoying and I can't really say I enjoyed it all that much. Everything else about this game however is still pretty fun. Now obviously some bosses are still a massive pain in the butt like this one, who I find absolutely <laughs> impossible to dodge. But this game also has a bunch of fun attacks to dodge. The fifth boss once again has some weird time manipulating ability, this time rewinding time. Now I am absolutely awful at dodging these spell cards but god damn are they cool. I absolutely love when they do these trippy things with projectiles and I think it adds a lot of flavor to these bosses. The final boss in this game, Eirin, is probably my favorite one if I'm being completely honest. I mentioned how I was a fan of slow, dense, and chaotic shots, and most of this boss's attacks are exactly that. There's just something so satisfying about bombing and weaving through hundreds of bullets and it really makes me feel like I unlocked Ultra Instinct or something. The final attack once again is incredible, with it starting off fairly simple but getting more and more chaotic as it goes on. In this last spell card, similar to Remilia, Eren becomes completely immune to bombs and they are used for nothing other than repositioning. It's just such a shame that I have to go through that incredibly frustrating early game if I want another round with this fantastic boss. This game is by far the weirdest one I've played. Now I went into this one without doing any research. Boy, was I incredibly confused. Like, first off, why are there two screens? Who are you? Charge shot? What is that? Where is my HP? Where are my bombs? Oh my god, sensory overload. You can probably see it in my gameplay and I just did not know what the hell I was doing. I actually somehow made it pretty far into the game on my first attempt despite knowing absolutely nothing. For some reason, but I was just kinda spamming charge attack and hope for the best since I didn't even know how to use my regular shots at this point. I actually could've probably beaten this game first try if I didn't accidentally skip out on my continue due to my brain being completely scrambled. Anyway, after whatever that attempt was, I decided to look up what this game actually was and it cleared up a lot of the confusion. 
Basically, your goal is to shoot down enemies so that they fly over to your opponent's screen, Bloom's 3D battle style. Every round, you have a few hits to take, which are different from your actual HP bar. Take too much damage and you lose the round along with the point of your HP. Each character has a few different spells they can cast depending on how much charge you have, and you can build it up by killing enemies or taking damage if you're feeling spicy. The most powerful of these spells is summoning a clone of yourself to wreak havoc on the enemy side for a few seconds. These spells also act as bombs and clear projectiles from your screen, increasing in range the more powerful the spell. So basically, all you need to do here is simply outlive the enemy. Problem is, the AI in the later stages goes absolute god mode. I'd say stages 1 to 6 are pretty free and really don't take a lot of effort to clear. But oh my god, the AI in the last 3 stages are nuts. They just dodge every single projectile you throw to them and it's pretty much impossible to catch them off guard. Only saving grace here is that they're pretty scripted and more often than not will just run head first into projectiles after a minute or so. That means your main strategy is really just focusing on yourself, which to be fair is a lot easier said than done since they seem to have spell cards ready at every moment of the fight. Overall, I found this game to be the weakest out of all the games I've played and I found it pretty unfun. It was pretty uninteresting for the most part and nothing really that noteworthy happened aside from when I first walked into stage 6 and heard this for the first time. Not gonna lie, I had a pretty big smile on my face hearing the original Flowering Nights for the very first time. But other than that, nothing much happened. Definitely the worst one out of the four I played and I really don't think I'll be going back to this one anytime soon. And that about does it for all the games I played. Wow, what an experience that was. If I'm going to be completely honest, that was some of the most fun I've had while playing games in a long while. They really don't look like much and I didn't think much of them either before playing them. But boy, am I glad I tried them out. The gameplay is just incredibly satisfying to do and really addicting once you get going. I'd say my favorite game out of the ones I played was probably Perfect Cherry Blossom. Sakuya was fun to use and the game didn't really have any frustrating mechanics. Lee's favorite was definitely Phantasmagoria Flower View due to it just being weird and having kinda wonky AI. Overall though, it was a great experience and I genuinely cannot wait to play more of these games in the near future. I finally see why the series is as popular as it is and why so many people seem to love bullet hells in general. It's really easy to get caught in the gameplay loop and there's just something about them that makes you hungry for more. I'll definitely be checking out more of these games out and actually, as of writing the script, I've bought some of them on Steam already. I'm honestly more than ready to dive headfirst into this game and its community and I really hope my experience with it will continue to be this amazing in the future. Hey, if you made it this far into the video, I would just like to say a huge, huge thank you for that, and I'm sorry if you're expecting some sort of let's play or rage montage. It's been a while since I made one of these types of videos, and not gonna lie, I'm happy to be doing it again. These are probably one of my favorite types of videos to make, and I would have definitely done more if it just didn't take so much time and effort to accomplish. So please, if you enjoyed this video, I would highly, highly appreciate it if you dropped a quick like on it. And hey, if you want to see more of these in the future, then I would also appreciate it if you subscribed since that genuinely does help me out a lot. With the size of my channel, one sub literally means the world to me. Oh, and one more thing, if you want to see my fully completed runs on these games, be sure to head on over to my second channel. I'll be uploading game replays over there, including Toho, so if you want to see those, the link will be in the description or in my future channels tab. Anyway, that's all for today, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all next time. Have a good one.